Milo Murphy's Law, the Phineas and Ferb effect. That's right, it counts, I'm including it. In the season 2 premiere of Milo Murphy's Law, the Pistachions have just about taken over Danville. So Milo, Orton, Dakota, and Cavendish find the future Professor Time, or as he's known today, Heinz Doofenshmirtz. And Zack and Melissa get trapped with Balji, Buford, and Candace until they're rescued by Phineas and Ferb. This episode addresses Phineas and Ferb's ridiculously good luck and pairs it with Milo Murphy's scientifically terrible luck to great effect. Well, what do you usually do when things go wrong? We have no frame of reference for that. This juggles the two masters of being a Phineas and Ferb reunion and being the resolution to a Milo Murphy's Law cliffhanger, and it handles both of these tasks admirably. Granted, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense as just a Phineas and Ferb reunion. You really have to have been watching season one of Milo Murphy's Law for this to make any sense. But if you're already watching Milo and you miss Phineas, it's satisfying on both counts. As a Milo fan, the emotional payoff of Dakota and Cavendish's relationship is beautiful. As a Weird Al fan, it's nice to see him in another Bruno Mars parody video. As a Fly to the Concords fan, it's nice hearing noted Bowie impersonator Jermaine Clements sing a song about pressure. It's just a lot of pressure. That's not necessarily inner city related. And as a fan of wacky time travel shenanigans that don't quite make sense, boy does this ever deliver. Wait a minute, why am I still part planned? And as a Phineas and Ferb fan, it's just really nice seeing everybody in action again and knowing they're still out there making the most of every day. I think the simpler thing would be to ditch the kid who makes bad things happen. No, Candace, we need all the soldiers we can get. Oh sure, Phineas, where was that attitude during Mission Marvel? 